Hello Royals fans, this is Sports Night News, I'm Joe Borek, and this is going to be a recap after the 4-0 loss that Callum Booth was able to get a shutout against our Reading Royals this evening. Please continue to subscribe down below or up above on the easy to use widget to keep the channel growing to 230 or more by the end of April. We really appreciate your guys' love and support thus far. But let's dive right into it. The Reading Royals, it was a weird game to say the least, not in the same sense of yesterday where the Royals were not that great in the first and the third in terms of getting good generated high high level of chances I should say where they were opportunists where in a low level of shots they had a few good chances yesterday where today in a high level of shots they had a lot of good chances the problem is they just couldn't solve Callum Booth and then on some of the chances as it was 32 to 26 the shots the Royals were also owed a for four on the power play which affected them but on that second power play the extended one they were actually mighty good in the zone at moving the puck around and creating chances they just couldn't get it past Callum Booth who was sprawling around there like he was Christopoulos on uh, the Toledo Wally or something like that he was playing like a bat out of hell out there he's of course the first star of tonight's game as if it wasn't for Callum Booth I think the Royals would have been able to get a goal and at least evened it up after you were able to get that Nick Master deflection um, there in the second period that was at the end of the second period I would have thought that after Santos shot that and Pesky got the other assist two players that are playing really well for the Mariners in this series especially the two games at home for them after Master got that goal there was a couple opportunities for the Royals to tie even one uh, to round out that period after that but then it was a huge save again by Callum Booth Booth came up big time and time again but Logan Flodell also in a couple of breakaways and also that massive glove save as well was able to come up huge Booth also robbed Braden Lowe a couple times and of course Lowe was blocked in front as well so I think this was really just the game of Callum Booth because if the Royals were able to get one earlier and kind of tie the game it changes the whole tide of this game and Callum Booth as Kirk McDonald talked about how people don't always realize how much momentum waves that teams get from the goaltender. Well, the Mariners were doing pretty solid in the game, but they got outshot in the first two, and I think honestly outchanced in the first two, but were able to walk away with the lead by getting a goal at the end of the second. And then in the third period, they didn't get a goal. Well, they got Alex Kyle's five minutes in, uh, which was able to be a good play that from Santos on the power play that was a questionable power play that was a questionable interference call to give them the power play that Kyle who came back from the Lehigh Valley Phantoms was just in the Flyers organization now kind of doing them dirty obviously I'm just joking with them but was able to score on a backhander there in front and then he's the guy that got the assist as he was able to shoot it as a skew one of the best players on the Mariners and in the league as well in the net front was able to get a deflection as he's one of the better guys with the hand-eye deflection coordination there Cameron Askew is as is Alex Kyle but they didn't need him to do that today as he got the backhanded goal and the shot goal there as Askew was able to score in the power play and Kyle was able to score in the power play uh, the Askew goal you couldn't really see how Sasir got the penalty because it was off camera on flow hockey but the one that Kyle got, I would say, and I hate to complain about the rest because it seems like you're making excuses, but it is just fact. That did not look like that. It looks like the most incidental contact you would ever see. That's just in the flow of the play, and it happened. Um, but they called it, and then Kyle was able to score in a nice backhand, or the other one's, of course, an empty netter by Bleakley. So Flo only allows three goals, three of which I don't think any he could have stopped. One is a great backhand, or the, and then two are great deflections in front of the cage. I mean, what do you want him to do there? So, I think this is just a game. The Royals have to keep pushing it offensively and keep the pace going. There was weird lackadaisical moments, though, like the final three minutes of the first period that it obviously remained scoreless, that all of a sudden the Mariners were able to up the ante and get great chances in the final three minutes. Then also in the middle clip, kind of like the middle clip of the second tangent of the final 10 of the second period. So basically like around the six something minute mark, the Mariners had a really good run there. And then they were, of course, able to score at the end of the second. So there was like spurts that the Royals just kind of played more of the defensive style where they gave the Mariners too much comp yesterday in the first and the third period. And then they got snapped right back into it and started actually playing pretty good again, pushing the puck back up the ice, playing north, and generating changes for themselves. It's just Callum Booth seemed to literally give the Mariners all the momentum in this game because whenever the Royals were able to generate a chance, he would make the save. 
and the Mariners were able to go back the other way and get it done because it was only a one nothing hockey game after the second, a game that easily could have been 1-1 or even one nothing in the other direction. And then all of a sudden, Kyle's able to score on a realistically a soft call to start to give the power play there and then excuse able to score in a power play goal 17 22 and, and then they sealed on the empty netter this is a game that i think the royals still have a very good chance to bounce back tomorrow it's kind of what kirk mcdonald talked about leading into playing on the road and eric brought it up on the broadcast one other day the they outchanced them a lot of times in maine they didn't do it as much yesterday because they didn't get enough shots on but they got a decent amount of I would say high leverage chances with the minimal amount of shots in the first and third period, especially in yesterday's game. And then in the second, they did have a lot of good chances and capitalized on them, the Royals did. But tonight, they got a good amount of chances. Count Booth was just a freaking stud. So he's the first star. Alex Kyle, the former Phantom, who I would assume will be back on the Phantoms next season, but is now back down with the Mariners killing the Royals, is the second star. And then the fir- and then the third star, excuse me, would be Santos, as Santos had two assists and continues to kill the Royals. But this has been a recap of the Royals falling, unfortunately, 4-0 to in Game 4 here. As I would say, tomorrow is a must-win, so the Royals are up in the series going back into Reading. You do not want to be up 2-0 and then down heading back into your home barn. That is no, 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 a big no, no, exactly the opposite of where you want to be. So I would say tomorrow, as I do that preview, I'll talk about that more, but it is definitely... A huge must win for the Royals, and I think they have a good chance to come in like bats out of hell. And maybe even, who knows, the Phantoms do have a game tomorrow, but maybe like the Phantoms did give Kyle back to the Mariners. We can get Nagel back, and I'm not saying Flo played bad. I think Flo's played great in this series, and he's been hung out to dry on some not ability to kind of bully people out of the net front by the Royals and the ability to get let guys kind of get set up in the net front to make deflections, and there's nothing a goalie could do about that, and then bad line changes yesterday, so there's nothing a goalie can do about that. But also playing three in a row for a guy that's not used to that coming out of college in his rookie season isn't the sweetest thing in the postseason, so having Nagel back would be huge, but we'll have to see what happens tomorrow. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Please continue to subscribe below. Our button is easy to use widget to keep the channel growing to 230 or more. Hopefully, it is better days for our Royals tomorrow. Got to keep the chance rate up as they did on offense tonight, but then also tighten up a little bit on defense. And something that is odd for this team, the PK is usually great. One power play should not have even been awarded to the Mariners, but the PK was not as sharp tonight, so you want to tighten that up tomorrow as well. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe and have a good day.